welcome everybody. And uh, once again, take we, we want to thank you for taking the time and and join us here on this uh, on this webinar that we're going to be talking about our um, our bollards and road blockers. Uh, and in fact, yes, we have a great attendance today. That I'm happy to to see that number going up. Um, as Bert mentioned, we have we actually have two factories uh, recently acquired. Um, OSAC, Kami OSAC, which it manufactures not only uh, uh, bollards and road blockers, but also we manufacture uh, turnstiles. We're going to start looking into those eventually. Um, let's get into subject right now. And let, let's start with uh, defining what is a boller. A boller is just basically a, a small, uh, and could be depending with depending on the on the on the diameter of the of the device. It's a thick pole that is embedded into the ground. And the idea of this device is to prevent traffic with going through. The idea is to actually to uh, to control access, to either control access or, or forbid access to certain areas, define different path, divide uh, vehicle path through uh, people access. So it's, it's, it's a device used for security and also access control. And these devices where can they be used? We can be used in bridges to protect bridges. We can uh, use them to protect uh, pedestrian crossings areas. We can use them to, we, we also see them in parking lots a lot. I don't know if you notice when you go into a parking lot, you see this metal, normally painted on yellow. It's a metal post painted, I mean, painted in yellow, it, it installed right next to the push button ticket or the ticket validator. Basically, those devices are to protect, whether it's the, uh, you know, the electronic devices, people, um, this in customs area also in high weight and high roads or highways. And this is based, uh, some samples of uh, places where we can see ball. For example, right here, we put we, this, uh, these ballers right here that protect this building uh, to close these access roads in certain areas, same here. So you can see the ballers, different, different applications of these, uh, of the borders. As mentioned before, we have, uh, with the recently acquired Kame Osak factory in Turkey, we have expanded our product line. So we have Kame Urbaco, it's a factory located in France, and then Kame Osak, uh, located in Turkey, also manufactures not only road blockers, but also uh, bollards. We can define our product line in two types. We can define it on access control and urban solutions, and also high security solution. We're gonna take a look at quick, we're gonna take a quick look at both, um, both uh, product lines, but first we're gonna start basically showing you the different brand that we have on the access product, access control product line. So right now we're gonna have we're gonna start with a with a basically with a uh, automatic retractable bollards. So basically this boiler we have two types, the G6 G6 Evo. Eventually I'm gonna show you the difference between the between each other. So uh, when we mean retractable automatic retractable, you're gonna just basically just basically by pressing a button or using any access control device, the boiler would rise. Um, either rise or lower, depending if you want to block or grant the access to the person to the area. So we can, we can. This this is done automatically. We have the semi-automatic retractable boiler, and the BMM is a manual boiler. In other words, in other words, like the name is same. It's a semi-automatic. You just need you need some interaction with us humans to basically to press a to bring the boiler down or bring the boiler up. Removable boilers. Uh, like the name is saying, it's completely removable. We can actually remove this boiler from this place uh, just by, you know, unlocking the device, twisting and you know, twisting the, the device on the on a counterweight clock, and then you pull it out, and then you basically you open the axis. Uh, fixed boilers, no, no much explanation is needed. Basically, um, these are boilers that are, you know, attached to the ground, the basic concrete to the ground, and they're just gonna stay there, just basically to forbid access to any site or any place. Removal post and fixed post. Uh, they have the same function as the boilers. However, the, as you can see, the diameter and diameter is smaller. They look more like, like a post instead of uh, like a boiler. Boilers tends to be uh, a bigger diameter on them. So, and then we have the. I'm going to show you really quick the the management uh, devices that we need for a boiler. So we have these devices where we can have our access control products basically to be. Uh, could be a, a license plate reader, could be a proximity card reader, could be a keypad, an intercom. So these devices allow us to or help us out to to manage those automatic bollers. And this will be the control devices you can use, whether it's a long range RFID, license plate reader, 
uh, Arcami Connect, Arcami Connect solution, which is a uh, contact, a dry contact that you can, through your cell phone, you can actually activate or deactivate any type of device, whether it's a gate, whether it's a bollard, I mean, anything that requires a switch to be activated. We can use remote controls, uh, proximity readers, intercom, like I mentioned before, any type of access control device will be installed on this uh, management totem, and they will allow us to activate or deactivate the bollards, in this case, the automatic bollards. And last but not least, in this device, in this area, we have a software called the Sigma 3. Today, in days, with, uh, with the new concept that we're managing today, which is the, um, the, the uh, smart, smart cities, with the smart city concept, you can actually have an installation of molars all around town, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight different places. And you could control uh, those uh, molars. Well, you, you can, exactly, you can either open or close access from the, you know, from the, from the from from your office sitting on your computer and it's basically pressing a pressing a button to activate or deactivate the access on these on these rows. Before we continue any further, let's show you really quick what is a uh, what's 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 accounting on a on a boiler installation. So we when we're gonna talk to a customer and they ask, you know, they, they come to us and they ask, hey I need I need a I need a boiler solution and I need to you know, and I need to specify something. I need to provide something to my customer. What should I look for? Well, you know, this is what we're going to show to the customer. First of all, we need the bollards. We're going to need the bollards. Yes, or yes, we need the bollards. That will be the main thing for this, you know, the, the protection for this for this area. In this case, in this case, we're, you know, we're proposing perhaps to G6 Evo with this uh, diameter 250 millimeters by 750 millimeter high. And they are made out of uh, stainless steel. All right, and they have a built-in uh, hydraulic uh, hydraulic pump. I'll show, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But in this case, we're gonna need the bollards, right? First, we need the bollards. Second, we need the totem and control board. Basically, uh, here inside this totem, we're gonna have installed anything related to uh, power to pro be provided to the bollards. We're gonna have the electronics that will allow us to control the movement up and down, and then. Number three, we have the control devices. Control devices could be any proximity card, could be a license plate reader, could be a keypad installed on this totem. And then also the totem includes uh, signaling devices, perhaps a, a traffic light. Could be red and, uh, it's, all, it's actually red and yellow. Red meaning not go, and yellow means go, have a caution. And then the safety devices, the loops, the ground loops. We need these guys over here because they're safety. Imagine if you, know, you come to the totem, you press a button, the person allow, grants you access. And then if you have to start going through and for some reason by accident, they press a button and the bollards go up. So that's a nice little alley right here. So it's gonna, it's gonna suffer some damage if these hydraulic bollards are going up. So the idea of having these uh, loops is to protect any access vehicle while they're going through, the, through these uh, two loops. In fact, we can have a, this could be a, a presence uh, device. So as long as there's a metal presence over here, you can actually enter a password or call the intercom or anything like that. So you can call the intercom, right? The person grant you access, bollard comes down, you start to go in through, once you once the vehicle clears the second loop, the bollards will go up automatically. So that's another you know reason, another advantage of using this type of uh, devices. So recapping again, we're gonna need the bollards. We need the management area or the management devices could be autonomous or we have another device which is called the technical center when we're using external uh, external pumps. Then we have the control devices, which could be the access are gonna grant you, I mean, the device that is, is going to grant you access. And then we have um, signaling devices, which is already included in the total pole. And then safety devices, which are the, the ground loops. Uh, one more thing I uh, didn't mention, uh, please, if you have any question or comment, we can do it at the end of the session. Just take notes or you can, you can actually start writing them down on the chat, in the chat or the Q&A area, but we would be glad to answer the questions and the, at the end of the, of the webinar. All right, let's keep on talking about the uh, traffic control devices. In this case, we're going to look at the, the Bowler model TVV. We call it for traffic control. This Bowler right here is made by our, our, our company, Kami Osak. The motorization on this water, the device that makes it go up and down, or the way they go up and down, is by hydraulic motorization. We should have a, an external pump somewhere around there with a couple of hoses going into the device. And every time they want it to go up, we press a button, a hydraulic oil instead gets injected into the cylinder inside the water, and they will go up. If we want the water to go down, we open a pump, and the oil is coming back to the, pump, to, the, to, the, to the tank where we have the oil. 
these boilers, they have a five millimeter thickness wall. So the, the cylinder is, has a, the wall have a five millimeter thickness. They are used mainly for traffic control. They do not have any type of, type of crash rating. No, no test of crash rating, rating has been done on these boilers. That's why they're meant for traffic control. They're not crash rated. But of course, if a car, you know, somebody's driving a car and hits a boiler, he's gonna get some damage. No, no matter what, the car's gonna get damaged. We have two different, different types of measurements. Uh, we have the 220 millimeter diameter by 500 millimeter high, and also 220 millimeters diameter by 600 millimeter high. Uh, operation speed, they can go up and down, anything between 1.4 to 4, to, to 4 seconds. Rise and fall can go up and go down. And then as I mentioned again, these devices are, are compatible with any access control system that is out there in the market. These boilers are available to be painted on any raw scale color, as well as stainless steel, as you can see right here. And then let's look into the G6 model from our Kame or Baco. Uh, Kame or Baco, these, these devices, we have a different with, a, with, a, with, a, with this cousin, let's call it that way, with a TBD. This, for this boiler, we can have three types of motorization. We have hydraulic, and it could be internal or external. And then we have the pneumatic motorization. We can choose either or. Uh, these are basically meant for traffic control, but they have a high impact resistance. Why? Because they have an 11 millimeter thickness wall. So there is a, this, these boilers are pretty thick and they can, they can take a hit. And, and, but however, these values over here are, are simulated on computers. We don't have a, uh, we don't have a, a certification per se. But uh, later on, we're gonna show you a bowler that is actually has a certification. It is, you know, more or less um, close to the range for the 241 kilojoules, which is the, the the impact energy how we measure this this uh, impact of these of these bowlers. We can keep on saying that they go can go up and down, rise and fall between five and seven seconds, depending on the motorization. It could be either again hydraulic or or pneumatic. These devices are compatible with any access control system. Again, they're managed through dry contacts and they are available on RAL colors. There's no stainless steel for this device, only RAL color, and they have a luminous band over here, a reflective band. Uh, so when light hits on them, so that's gonna shine back. Um, one thing, you might be asking yourself, well, when am I gonna use um, external uh, hydraulic or pneumatic motorization? The difference is very basic. Um, if you're going to have a boiler or a project, if you as a customer, well, you know, how, how often this, this uh, boiler or this axe is going to be used? If they say it's going to be often used, very, I mean, it's going to be used very often, we have to go with hydraulic. If they say no, eventually, you know, it's going to be no, not too often, we can use pneumatic. Reason being is because for pneumatic, we have a, uh, we have a compressor that's going to fill up a tank, a, a tank full of air. So eventually, if we use this boiler way too many times, we're gonna run out of air, so it's gonna take a while before the you know before the air the air tank is gonna be filled up, and then the boiler is gonna start working again. That's why we recommend for boilers with constant use, which we recommend we highly recommend to use hydraulics. Let's look into another for a model another model for the traffic control devices. Right here we have the G6 Evo. Basically, it's about the same. Same devices as G6, but it has a different. These devices, we can actually change the sleeve. Um, for these guys over here, we can have three types of that's the same type of motorization. We have the external, the internal, which is right here. As you can see right here, this is the internal hydraulic pump. We could have an external pump, of, you know, we have a hydraulic hose going to a, a, to a control center, install somewhere else with an hydraulic pump internally. And then we can have also the pneumatic motorization. Uh, the system, as I mentioned before, it has an innovative uh, system which which allow us to change the sleeve on this boiler. You can actually have three different models. You can have a the sleeve that you can actually paint on any color. You can have the stainless steel sleeve and also the custom the the customizable sleeve. You can actually customize the sleeve to any uh, any picture that you want. Let's say, for example, a CD 
it celebrates several, um, I don't know, in Latin America, we see a lot of different festivities and saints, or perhaps in our country, we can do the 4th of July, we can have the 4th of July, and if you have a bowler, and you have the, the, you know, the stainless steel sleeve for the 4th of July, you can actually remove this sleeve, install our 4th of July decorated sleeve, and put it on the bowler, so we can, we can do that. Uh, or if you want to sell uh, publicity, just be my guest and generate some some revenue out of that sleeve. The thickness of the wall is almost, pretty much the same. It's about 11 millimeter thick. Same operation speed. Uh, we have uh, this slightly, this like uh, the, the material which is made out of is, is a bit stronger, so we can get a higher impact energy. Again, it's semi computer simulated. It's not certified. And these devices are compatible with any access control systems out there. Let me show you really quick here. How is the mechanism internally? So right here, you can see the, the molar ceiling there. And then you see the three different types of sleeve. We have the, the one that is uh, dual, or we can paint, the stainless steel, as well as the, um, as well as the custom made. And right here, we, say, we see the uh, internal parts on the border. So you can see the hydraulic spring right here that goes inside the cylinder. I will, make, I will take the border up and down. And then we have the cast iron structure for the, this is called the monoblock. This right here is called the monoblock, this whole device. Right here we have the built-in hydraulic pump and the accessories bracket, which is where we have, uh, we have a couple of uh, bulbs. And also we have upper and lower limit, basically to indicate when the water is up and when the water is down. And here we show you a few samples of, you know, custom made, sleeve and other samples as well and then we're going to talk about semi-automatic boards the difference with the other one with the automatic of course we're going to have we're going to need some some human interaction to make to make these devices work we have two models we have the g6 and we have the g6 evo technically the features are the same 11 11 um, millimeter thickness wall this is the uh, made out of a stain, uh, cast iron. This guy, you can change the sleeve on this guy on the G6 Evo. Um, it's the same monoblock structure for this device, for these bowlers. Impact energy is about the same. And the difference, uh, well, the difference with, of course, the, uh, with the automatic is that we, we, use, uh, we use the key. So we have to insert the key over here. We release the lock with the foot. We press down the bowler and then we lock again. And that way the bowler stay down. When you want to reopen the access, basically release with the key, and the water will go up automatically. I have to mention that these bowlers are meant to be used on areas that are normally closed, where the bowler is normally on the up position. Why? Because internally, they have an air, a compressed air ceiling there. So if you keep that bowler mostly on the down position, eventually that compressed air is gonna it's gonna go bad, or the cylinder is gonna go bad, and then the bowler will go. We go, well, won't go up and it's gonna stay down most of the time. That's why we recommend this type of waters for access roads that are gonna be mostly um, in the closed position. All right. Uh, so, and then we have the, the manual retractable bowlers. Again, these bowlers are meant for areas that are um, for use that is normally open, where the water is gonna remain mostly, but the area, the access area is gonna be, it's gonna remain open. How do we open this? Basically, when we need to close the area, we grab our key, insert it on the border, twist it, unlock it, move it up, lock it back again, and then remove the key. Right here, I think we can show you different type of key that we have for this border. And then the, it, it, its dimensions are slightly different than the other one. These borders are, uh, the dimensions are 200 millimeters, 200 millimeter uh, diameter by 640 millimeters high. And they are made of a thick steel. The, 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 the steel thickness is uh, the wall is uh, four uh, millimeters. And these are made by Kame or Baco. And then we're going to show you the ones made by our sister company, um, Kami Osak, designed for uh, occasional openings and entrances. As you can see right here, is at the removal. We have a, a, a fixator part of the, the system. Basically, this is the area that goes. Uh, embedded in the ground. We're actually going to ground that part and then we want to remove the boiler. We just basically use our key, unlock the boiler, and remove it from the area. The dimension, we have two type of, uh, two sizes. We have the 100 millimeter by 324, which is uh, diameter by height, and the other model would be 500 by, by 1200 millimeter, 1 1.2 meters. 
In these are made out of car, uh, cast steel iron for meter, four millimeter thickness in the walls. These are available in the in different wall scale colors. If you like the orange, be my guest. But you can actually you're allowed to you're allowed not to. You have the option to choose that uh, another RAL color. Okay, and then we're gonna talk about our fixed bollards. Our fixed bollards, like the name is saying, this is gonna be basically you install that boller right there and won't be moved unless you wanna move it in the future. Uh, these bollards are made out of uh, cast iron with a wall thickness of five millimeters. You can have them also in stainless steel if you wish. The dimension, we have two type of uh, dimensions. We have a 220 by, three, by 324, uh, I mean, diameter by high, and also five millimeter, 500 millimeters by 1.2 meters. These are the two height available. This is the, the part that's gonna go on the ground, and this is gonna be the part, the visible part of the border. Design, of course, designed for, for areas where you know, access road is not allowed at all. This is our, our fixed border from our um, Kami Osak family. Now, in regards of Kami or back of fixed border, again, we have the G6 and the G6 Evo bollards. Two families, basically the ceiling, the cylinder feature stays the same. This guy can be painted on different round scale colors, and we have the uh, the um, the um, ret uh, light ret uh, reflective band right here, and also same feature with the G6 Evo is uh, in interchangeable sleeve. And we on these guys we can actually install an LED light if needed. If you have an installation that requires to have a fixed boiler with LED lights, we can actually do that on these devices. Um, it's made out of uh, um, cast iron, 11 millimeter thickness wall, two dimensions available for this type of bollers. And then uh, again, I already mentioned the models. We have the cylinder model, which is the one that we can paint on any real color. We have the stainless steel as well as the custom cover. And then one more time, these are designed for areas where the vehicle passage is not allowed. Fix and removal post right here, as you can see on this sample right here, that basically to limit, to, to, to mark the division or to divide the area where the vehicles are supposed to be going and pedestrians are supposed to be going. That's basically for, for, for traffic control, for pedestrian or traffic guidance, basically. And then we're gonna look into our high security boilers. High security boilers are meant to be installed on those areas where it requires security. We don't want anybody to get into this area. And, and if they try to, to force themselves into this area, well, they're gonna have a tough time going through our, going through our, our boiler. So we have uh, two types of boilers on this. In this case, we have actually three types. We have the HBD, which is the high, the, the, the high security. We have the, we have the RBD, which is a reinforced boiler, and we have the TBD, which is a traffic control boiler. And we on this in for the for the for the Kami Osak, we have the um, we have the automatic, and we also have fixed boiler for the security part of it. Let's take a look at RBD boiler right now. The um, the reinforced boiler it, it offers uh, medium levels of security. It, it supports an impact of uh, M30 or K4, which is translated into the 6.8 ton vehicle traveling uh, 48 kilometers per hour. This boiler doesn't have a certification. Everything has been it's been simulated. The impact and the, the resistance is being simulated in computer. It's not certified, but we're in the process of certifying this this, this boiler. We're pretty confident that we're going to pass that certification. The opening speed on these guys is. Um, between 2.5 and 5 seconds these guys they, they work only with hydraulic motorization and we have the two different type of uh measurement for the for the boiler we have 270 by 320 and 700 by by 900 and i'm sorry 270 by 700 high and 320 millimeter um diameter by 900 millimeter high these are the dimensions or the options available again electronic external hydraulic um motorization and these are the different uh, voltage of, uh, that you could supply in order to make these devices work let's look into a uh, high sec uh, high security boiler in this case our high security boiler we can find type we can find the automatic and we can find it's the uh, the fixed boilers these guys are um they have a certification they're certified to k8 and k uh, k12 and k8 uh, um, impact uh, energy and these guys are you know they offer the highest level of security these these boilers right here 
they can support impact energy from K12 or K8. The difference is basically of the standard is 6.8 ton vehicle traveling at 80 kilometers per hour, or we have a K8, which is a 6.8 ton vehicle traveling at 64 kilometers per hour. So we're 35 on the K to, to withstand the impact of K12 and K8. Uh, the motorization of these devices is a uh, is, is a hydraulic, mainly hydraulic, only hydraulic actually. And the time to go up and down is between anything between 2.5 and 5 seconds. Dimensions available, 270 by 700 and 320 by 900 millimeter. That's, that, that's meaning the diameter and high. And compatible with any access control system. Also the, the, RBD, the RBD family. Because we, we use uh, dry contacts to dry this water to tell to send the signal to go either up or down depending in the case. We have on the fixed water we have two types of wallers. You might be asking yourself, well, what the heck is this? Well, the difference is basically for shallow areas where we don't have too much space to dig and install our water. We actually have this device over here or this option. We can offer you the option for the shallow amount and also for areas we don't have a problem digging our holes and, and you know digging a hole and installing our water. We have the the deep, the deep, uh, the boiler for deep uh, installations. We have two options for this, depending whatever is the case. Now, looking into the cami or backhoe um, section, we're going to look into these boilers over here. Our high security boilers. We look at the we have the low level security and we have the high security guys over here. So we're going to show you the standard is based on this. It's basically it's a different standard. But still, it's 35. Out there's plenty of there's quite a few standards out there. So we have the the, the standard base like this: um, the 7.8 vehicle traveling either at 48, 64, or 80 kilometers per hour. So we have the different models. We have the 130, 140, 150, and then we have the G30, which is a boiler that has a certification, but for a lower impact energy. Let's get into detail with all. Let's talk about the GT G30 boilers. It's a it's a boiler which dimensions are 270 by 750, made by Camion Baco. And this, this guy is made for, uh, for sites where it requires a low level of security. It has a hydraulic, only hydraulic motorization, only hydraulic motorization. Um, it could withstand the impact of a 2.5 ton vehicle travel at 48 kilometers per hour. You can see right here the proof, a poor trucks got stuck over there. Um, Another thing, these boilers are certified. You might be you might be asking yourself, well, but these these values they look they look about the same as the one that we had on the on the G6 and G6. Well, yes, but this actually this boiler is actually certified. You can take a look at how the boiler looks like. This is how the boiler looks when you know before it's put into the ground, and this is you know these are the you know, poor vehicle that got damaged during the test. And here we have the um, the um, uh, the, the certifications that are available upon request. Basically what we have over here, this is a standard which is mentioned and when it was made and also here we have the velocity, uh, the type of vehicle, 2.5 tons, this is what it means. Then we have uh, um, the fact that this is related to the type of vehicle. Then we have the speed and it was crash, angle of crash and degree of penetration. This over here, 0.4 meters and 0.6 meters. The representation meaning how deep the vehicle went into the, into the property. All right, let's talk about now our 130, which is in our high security borders. It's the lowest, it's the lower range, one of the lower range that we can offer. This 130 means, uh, just to difference, no, it could be, this is a 130 means 30 miles per hour. There could be a difference. The motorization on these guys on the automatic is only hydraulic. And I have to mention that we have, this is the fixed boiler. And this is the removal water. So for the 130, we have three options. We have three models. We have the fully automatic, we have the fix, and we have the removal. All these guys, we can actually change the sleeve on this. So we have the um, we have the sleeve that we can paint on any color. We have the stainless steel sleeve and the custom made and the customizable uh, sleeve. Uh, this guy is only the motorization on the on the automatic is only hydraulic. It could take a, the impact of a 7.5 ton vehicle traveling at 48 kilometers per hour. The dimensions, 250 by one meter. Available in different colors. As I mentioned before, different color rail, stainless steel, or the custom cover. These are made of high resistance steel. 
and these are the certifications that these voters uh, are currently having. I have to mention also that to pass the certification, we only use, use one voter. There are other brands that they use two or three voters in order to comply with the certification. And the 140 families, a little bit of a higher um, level of security. The motorization on these guys is exclusively uh, exclusive hydraulic, but we can also find the fixed and the removal water. Uh, the impact energy on these guys is 7.5 ton vehicle traveling at 64 kilometers per hour. So this water will stop that type of vehicle traveling at that speed. The dimension, 250 by 1,000 millimeters. Available on this, these three models, the three options. We have the red color and the, the, the cylinder as lead, which is available on, on, on any red color. We have the stainless steel as well right here. And then we have the, the custom cover, so we can offer whatever option you wish to, to get. These are also made of high resistance steel, and these are the certifications that these uh, bowlers uh, have. Last but not least, on this type of bowler, we have the 150, our stronger or a stronger border on the on the Urbaco side. We have uh, also again we have the same the same three models. We have the uh, fixed the removal as well as the automatic, exclusively hydraulic. The motorization on this guy. There's no way that we can use pneumatic. It has to be hydraulic, no other motorization. Oh, I have to mention also uh, this bowler. We have the EFO option, which is the rapid raise in case that we have the rise of the bowler or the automatic option. Um, if you have a, you know, if you have a an installation or a project where, you know, we can always use the the open and closing cycle, the regular speed. But if, the, if for some reason the customer or the project requires to have a, a super fast uh, rise of the bowler, we have that option, which is called the EFO. It will take an impact of a, a 7.5 ton vehicle traveling at 80 uh, 80 kilometers per hour. Dimensions 325 millimeters by 1,000 millimeters, so 3.25, uh, um, no, 32.5 mil, uh, centimeters by one meter high. Again, the options for the sleeves, the, cost, the, the, the one that we can paint, stainless steel as well as a, as a custom cover, made of high resistance steel, and these are the certifications, these bowler today and day they have. It's actually, I have to mention when we had a video for this, um, for this bowler, when they were tested for the, for the for this certification, it got hit by this truck, and then the boiler was good. So they lowered the boiler, they raised the boiler, and they put they, they run another test to this boiler. So it was certified not only on the, the equivalent to K12, but also the equivalent to K4. So it it, it took the hit of the vehicle, uh, even even though it was hit by a by a by a bigger vehicle before. Now. When, imp when we are implementing a solution of these high security bowlers, this is what we need. Of course, we're gonna need the bowlers in the case of automatic, right? We're gonna need our bowlers, in this case, whatever is the model. But we're gonna need a technical center, why? We're gonna need, we're gonna need a technical center because we need to, if we're using the embedded pump, fine, we can have the embedded pump inside each bowler. However, we're gonna need some areas, we're gonna have to run the, ele the, elect the electronics and so forth, in this case, we are using an external pump here. Right here, we have the hydraulic pump. We have all the, you know, the electronics where we have the um, transformer to bring the, the, the voltage lower. We have the PLC, which has the, the computers that manage the, the, the rise and the lower, lower of the voltage. And then we can also have the co uh, command center or the totem pole system. We actually have a, we have a combination. We can have all the command centers over here. Basically, we can have a keypad, proximity reader, LPR or whatever, this could send the signal over here to a hydraulic pump, and then the hydraulic pump will send or you know take the oil to either rise or lower the water. This is basically what we have are the different components that we can find on a uh, automatic boiler installation in the case of high security. Let's take a look now our our to our um, to our road blockers. Right here, we can also see that we have three different models. We have the heavy duty, we have the reinforced, and we have the residential model. Basically, what we're trying to say over here, we can take, we can cover anything from one to six meter width of the road that you wish to uh, to, um, to to secure. Uh, the heavy duty ball, uh, the heavy duty um, road block is 35 
to the equivalent of a K-12 crash rating test. It says that all of them, they have hydraulic pump power unit, so it has to be hydraulic movement, otherwise won't be able to, to move. I mean, it has to be hydraulic, pneumatic cannot be used. A 50T axle load resistant, in other words, it could be a truck waiting uh, with a weight of 50 tons, can go over this device and it won't damage it. A V shape for inner structure, I will show you really quick what, what do I mean with the V shape. And this is meant for high security areas. The reinforce can cover up to six meters as well, hydraulic um, power unit, and it can also take a 50 ton load axle run. In other words, if a, a vehicle or a, a truck in this case weighing 50 tons can go over this device without causing any damage to it. As well as the residential model, same situation here, we can cover up to uh, spaces up to uh, up to six meters, hydraulic mobilization. Motorization. This can um, they can have a uh, they can a vehicle weighing forty with a weight of forty tons can go over that device when it's on the on the on the open position, and uh, um, it won't cause any damage. And again, it's meant to be for for residential areas, not for for medium or high security. And we're talking about here our. our we can talking about here. We have the uh, we have the, uh, the road blocker, the high security road blocker. As you can see right here, this is meant for for big depth installation. So this area over here will go underground, and this is a certification that it was uh, that was certified this product too. And when I uh, and when I mentioned before the V shape right here, this is what we call the V shape, and I'll show you later on when I show you a picture but explains better what, what is that means. And this is designed for areas where, you know, highest levels of securities are needed, certification M50 or K12. In other words, 6.8 ton vehicle traveling at 80 kilometers per hour. Hydraulic motorization, as we mentioned before, it's compatible with any access control system. And this requires, these are the voltage that you will have to supply in order to make these devices work showing you here the different uh, width that we can actually provide you um, provide your protection for. This is the, we're, here we, we mentioned, uh, we're just mentioning the, the dimension of different models that we have available for you, plus well as the, as the product code. Uh, right here, the V-shape, what is the V-shape used? In other products they have, basically they have semi oval shape around here. And then the vehicle, when it comes, you know, when it's coming to to hit the area, can actually this shape over here can have this vehicle to go over that. In our case, no, we have this this plate over here that covers the V shape, and when the vehicle hits over here, guess what? It's gonna get stuck on this area over here. Also, to add an extra protection, we have these hooks over here. Not only it's gonna hit that's gonna get stuck, but also the hook's gonna the hook's gonna get some extra support right here, as you can see. It's going to take extra support in our in our frame, and that vehicle won't go anywhere, guarantee. And okay, in cases where we have this limit, so if we're going to have an installation where we don't have enough depth to install the 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 road blocker, well, guess what? We have a solution for you. We have the surface mount. We only require no more than twenty five centimeters to install this guy over here. So you can have pre-existing uh, pipes running through that. As long, as long as we don't go over 25 centimeters, we're gonna be able to install this surface road block. And these guys are designed to withstand the impact of a, um, of a K-12 uh, scale, which is 6.8 6 ton vehicle traveling at 80 kilometers per hour. Um, the testing for this guy is pending, so it's not certified yet. However, we're confident that we're gonna pass it. It's being designed with the same criteria as, all, as the other models, so confident, you no, know, there shouldn't be an issue passing this, uh, this crash rating test. And once again, as you can see over here, designed for installation where depth is a, is, is a limit, hydraulic motorization, and one more time, we can cover areas from one to six meters, and the voltage needed in order to make to work this system. I'm going to show you really quick a video showing the impact that the crash rating test for a road blocker. You can see here it requires quite some 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 uh, construction work in order to make it work. We require this configuration is being provided to you. We have to we have to get the rebars in a certain area because we're going to need we're going to need some support to transfer the impact energy. It's a 
see video. I see that video. It's like, oh, it's, it's painful to see that. But uh, here in slow motion. Right there, our V shape catches the truck and won't allow to go, won't allow to go anywhere. Of course, we're going to have some, some debris going over. However, that truck is not going anywhere. And right here, something important to mention that we have a the degree of penetration. We actually pass, and let me show you really. Oh no, quick here. I show you really quick the degree of penetration. So we didn't go over 2.5, 2.1 meters is the minimum, uh, is the maximum penetration that you're allowed to be P1. So we were under, we were on 0.8, less than a meter. And the device again after that impact. Jose, we lost you for a few seconds there. If you you were saying anything, would you repeat it? Uh, what part? I'm sorry, Bert. No, uh, we thought that I lost you there, and you were saying something. But the film says a thousand words, so I, I leave it at that. I, I just thought that your communication had gone down. Sorry. And next, we're going to show a video of a crash test on a uh, OSAC border. We're having some technical difficulties. I'm not sure what's going on with the video. Oh, okay, not by media. I'm sorry about that. I'm having technical difficulties playing the video. But now we're gonna do the we're gonna open the, the questions the QA session. Now if you're you know if you have any question, comments, now is the time. Uh, thank you very much, Jose. That was a great uh, informative presentation. We do have a couple of uh, uh, chat questions from our friend Colin Sloan and the first one is are both types of fixed bollards crash tested the shallow and the deep first question would you respond on the shallow and the deep on the high security let me go let me go back I'm throwing a blank over here let me just go back I'm drawing a blank on that one I think the only one that has been have been crash tested is uh, is the automatic. I don't think the uh, no the the the, the fix or the, the fix haven't the fix haven't. Okay. It's been simulated via computer. However, we haven't done it physically. This is done via computer. And his other question is on the 150. Is the shallow foundation crash tested? No, it's only the automatic version that has been tested. Okay. Okay. As I said, repeat. Uh, Give us, give us a, an email. We'll be more than glad to answer specific questions. I do want to send out a uh, hello and thank you to our friends in the West Coast from A&D Autogate and also George Canselmo in the Northeast. Happy to see you come on uh, and see a presentation. We will be talking soon. Uh, as you can see, uh, Comet does have quite a formidable array of uh, bollards and road blockers with the two manufacturing plants. Um, as, a, as a, just a side note, we tend to think of the OSAC brand as the entry level and then the Orbaco as the tough and highly, higher priced uh, product, but uh, they both fit uh, many, many uh, uses. Um, uh, they're tested. We have the certifications that we can provide for you. Uh, so, uh, give us a call. We'll be glad to, to work with you. Uh, as I said, thank you. Uh, any questions, please forward them to me. 
Um, let me hold on. Let me see. There's a One couple. Second, of... I have a James already. James already is here asking for if you have a price lead and lead time estimate. It depends on the on the lead time. I can tell you the lead time normally is about four uh, six to eight, uh, four to six weeks. I believe, four Mandy. If, you, if I'm wrong, you can correct me. It also depends if they're in stock. They should be faster. If not, otherwise, it's a uh, um, four to six week lead time. Uh, the other one that we have can the totem carry cameras or video phone from Silly Moore. Silly Moore is asking the question. Uh, you can actually install whatever you want on that totem pole. Uh, ideally, if you already know what type of access control device you're gonna use, if you provide us the dimensions for that. So when the manufacturer, the, when the when the faceplate is being is being manufactured, we can ask factory to make the 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 the, the right cut for us, and that way when once you get the device, you already have the cutout for it, and it will be just a matter of, of embedding your, either your, your cameras or video phone or whatever access control device you wish to use. One more question from Colin. Is the equipment UL listed needed on electronics? Uh, let me see over here. The equipment we listed on electronics. We use, we're trying to use as much, as many, as many UL devices as possible, but we are not you will certify. It's just a matter of, you know, if you're gonna, if you have, if you're working on a project that requires your listing, we can use, again, as many UL listed devices for the critical components. So in that way, um, uh, an on-site certification can be scheduled and it will be a lot easier using, you know, the, the, the majority of component being, components being UL, especially on the, on the uh, critical, on the critical component, which is, transformer, power supplies, and so forth. Very well. Again, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we, we will be having further webinars on other product lines. Uh, the invitations will be sent out. For just as a point of interest, we do have, uh, earlier in the day, we do have a Spanish version of this same webinar product pres presentation. So. If someone is particular keen to the uh, Spanish language, we do have that as well. If you should have a client that wants to uh, listen in on a Spanish, we do offer that as well. So let us know and we will uh, comply and send you that invitation. So thank you again. We appreciate your time and we hope to see you soon. And uh, please take care while this COVID-19 is, uh, running through uh, our country. Thank you again. Take care. I right, thank you. No more to add anything else. Any question, anything else before we leave? I believe we're good. Well, thank you for, for, for attending and uh, thank you again. We hope to see you next week with another webinar from our product line. Thank you, take care.